Hey, this is case of the week number seven, gallstone ileus. I'm Dr. Dan Colville from Radiologist HQ. So we'll start with an x-ray. So on the left here, we have an upright x-ray, and on the right, this is a supine x-ray. On this upright film, we can see that there's an air fluid level in the stomach, which can be normal. But then we also see air fluid levels within these dilated small bowel loops in the central and left abdomen. On this supine view, we see more of those dilated small bowel loops. And then we also see some branching subtle gas here in the right upper quadrant. And this is representing pneumobilia. There's another finding here that if you don't see now, you'll have another chance to see in a few minutes. This is a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis without IV contrast, but with oral contrast. And in the liver, we see this branching gas here corresponding to pneumobilia. You can tell that that is pneumobilia and not portal venous gas because it doesn't extend out to the periphery. If we saw portal venous gas, that tends to be more peripheral. You can remember portal peripheral. So pneumobilia, and as we track inferiorly, you could see the collapsed gallbladder here that contains gas as well, appears almost indistinguishable from the adjacent gastroduodenal junction there, the proximal duodenum. And that's because there is a fistula between the gallbladder and duodenum. Moving inferiorly, notice all these dilated small bowel loops. Small bowel tends to be less than three centimeters in diameter, so these are abnormally dilated, which raises your suspicion for a bowel obstruction. And you can also get a sense as to why we didn't see as many dilated small bowel loops on the x-ray, particularly that supine view, and it's because the bowel is fluid filled. And that can reduce your sensitivity for detecting small bowel obstruction on x-ray. There is a sign you can look for though. Notice how that many of these tiny foci of gas are non-dependent and have a string of pearls apparent. So you might see it chain of tiny dots of gas on x-ray that can clue you into the fact that there may be a small bowel obstruction. Now, you may have noticed that there's another key finding here. There's a calcification in the right lower quadrant in a loop of ileum that has a lamellated pattern telling you that it's formed in a hollow viscous, and that's the gallstone causing the obstruction. Notice that distal to that gallstone, the terminal ileum, distal ileum is completely collapsed. Turning to the coronal reformatted images, we again see that right upper quadrant pneumobilia within the central liver. And then there's also the chronically inflamed contracted gallbladder here, which it looks inseparable from the proximal duodenum. There's some inflammation around it. And also notice all these markedly dilated small bowel loops indicating that there's an obstruction. You could tell that these are small bowel loops and not colon because we see these lines extending across the entire lumen. Those are valvulae conaventes, classic for small bowel. This is jejunum, whereas colon will tend to have hostral folds that don't extend across the entire lumen. In the right lower quadrant, there's our offending gallstone there that migrated through the gallbladder wall into the small bowel where it caused an obstruction here in the distal ileum. Now, if we return back to that x-ray, do you see the finding now? <laughs> it's uh, giving you a clue. It's in the right iliac fossa. We see the gallstone. All right, let's go over a few key points for gallstone ileus. So this is a rare complication of chronic cholecystitis. The name is actually somewhat of a misnomer since it's not actually an ileus, but a small bowel obstruction. And that's because this gallstone will migrate through a fistula between the gallbladder and small bowel, usually at the level of the duodenum, and then it becomes impacted in the terminal ileum classically because the lumen of that bowel is small. So this tends to only occur with large gallstones that migrate through like two to three centimeters in size. The stone can also impact in the proximal ileum. Like in this case, it seems like it's more in the mid to distal ileum or the jejunum, even the duodenum or distal stomach, and it causes a gastric outlet obstruction if that occurs. So for a gold star, what's the name of that syndrome if you have a gallstone causing a gastric outlet obstruction? Yes, Bouveret syndrome. Now on abdominal x-ray, look for the regular triad and don't confuse that with the regular sign, which we saw previously. That was when you have pneumoperitoneum outlining the bowel wall. Regular also named his triad here. And that's when you see small bowel obstruction, pneumobilia, and a gallstone in the right iliac fossa. Now, let me point out that gallstone ileus is definitely not the most common cause of pneumobilia. We see that often after procedures like ERCP, where a sphincterotomy is done, and that's an expected finding that can be seen for months to years and is not concerning. But you want to look for these additional secondary findings when you see pneumobilia. We see gallstone ileus most commonly in elderly patients, and it's typically treated surgically where the gallstone is removed and the fistula repaired. Hey, thanks for watching Case of the Week number seven, Gallstone Ilias. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our podcast, YouTube channel, or by following on social media. Reviews are magical and help others find us. Until next time, remember, radiology is life.